question. But uh, one thing that is so important about developing an emotionally intelligent organisation, it's easier said than done. Like anything, it's easier said than done. I thought it was a really good use of an hour. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it was so focused. And I think the, th the message that's come to me is that just making a very small change mm -hmm. in the way that you do things can have a really big impact. So, yeah, good use of an hour. The old school thinking of leading organisations was leave your emotions at home, hang them up at the court rack and then get on with your work. Lots of research over the past 20 years has established and proven that leaving your emotions outside of work is potentially damaging and destructive. Let me ask you this question, show of hands. Anybody ever worked with a negative person? <laughs> yeah, some people, they're in the room, I won't put my hand up just yet. <laughs> okay, if that negative person is in this room, if that negative person is in this room, just blink. <laughs> okay, all right, we've got it, okay. So we go, rabbit in headlights. It's only I saw you. But this thing, what does a negative person actually do to you? Do they have you, help you have a great day or do they drag you down? Drag you down? Do they inspire you to do your best or do they depress you enough to think, I'm just going to get through this and get on. I'm going to get through it and go home. But a negative person is not a negative person. That's got you, hasn't it? I was with you till then, Scott, but uh, not there. A negative person is just someone that's different to you. What do you think? I thought it was really thought-provoking. Made me think about some of the messages I deliver, how I deliver them, the words I use, and I'll be trying to take it on board and use it in future. Sympathy. Ever worked with someone that's really positive? Helps you want to do your best? <laughs> no one's moving. Uh, <laughs> 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 OK, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not with him anymore. But someone, I'll ask you again. Um, this isn't a courtroom, by the way. You're not admitting anything. Um, someone that's really positive, that is there if you want to ask a question. They say, have you got one minute? And they're just there for one minute. They're not there forever. And if you've got a problem, you can ask. And rather than saying what you should do with this, they say, what do you think we should do to resolve this? What do you think a good idea would be? They engage you, they involve you, they collaborate. Because often managers are promoted to management roles, not because they demonstrated any real ability or willingness or capability to lead people to achieve things through them. They're promoted on the strength of they were good at something else. What do you think? <laughs> uh, really useful, just made me think about how I interact with my team and giving difficult messages out at difficult times. You know, so no, really, really useful. Excellent, Thank thanks a lot. They were good in a non-management role that involve them getting results by themselves, and they excelled at it. Useful about that? Very good practical application of right. emotional intelligence, okay. stepping into other people's shoes. Excellent. Of looking at what you do is doing a job. Another way of looking at it is supporting and nourishing a community. That would get me out of bed in the morning. Um, it's a really good presentation, very inspirational. Good to have it first thing in the morning, so you can go back to work with all those thoughts, and hopefully put them into practice. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. There was an experiment done by uh, scientists in America and they had a, a shark tank uh, in an aquarium and they had a, a couple of sharks, man-eating sharks and fish-eating sharks and lots of small fish that the sharks would usually feed upon. And for the first week or so they let the sharks swim where they like, eat what they want. The small fish were uh, dead. They were shark food. Soon after, the scientists thought, we've got to make this credible. Let's do an experiment like this. And what they did with the aquarium, they put a, a glass partition down the middle of the tank. The sharks were in one side, the small fish, the food, were in the other side. But the challenge came when the sharks would swim towards the fish and then bang the face on something that they could not see. And then they try again, but after a few days, they stopped trying. Their limitation was, I can only go this far. What they found was the shark, the sharks would rather starve to death than hit that barrier again. They could see what they wanted, but they couldn't get it. What happened? They gave up. Apply that to an organisation. I can't speak to my boss like that. I can't ask for this 
without feeling foolish. If I say that, he or she is going to judge me. I'm just going to stay at this side of the tank. That's silo working. The most intelligent organisations don't work in silos. They work in departments and divisions and teams, but then they collaborate across organisations because they make better decisions more quickly with less stress, lower cost and less expensive rework. <coughs> in most intelligent organisations swim, keep swimming, because they know that people speaking their truth is something to be welcomed and encouraged rather than put in a corner and left alone. In most intelligent organisations, don't look at customer service, they look at customer satisfaction. A uh, really useful session. No, thanks. Um, I don't it gave me some time out to think and reflect, which hopefully I can take back to my team and have some sort of similar conversations. In most intelligence complements technical competence. It's deeply human, it's not soft and cuddly, let's hug a tree, and it's not about being nice. Nice should be the default setting. But sometimes you've got to be something other than nice as a manager. There's tough messages to convey. There's performance issues that need addressing and deserve addressing. And please bear in mind, if someone's underperforming, it's not about them, it's about you and them. Great performance cannot be achieved in isolation. Failure, poor performance cannot be achieved in isolation. <coughs> because what you find uh, as a manager, you may not be aware, but people's brains keep score. Some managers are so focused on the process going right, things being delivered on time, and it to be the right quality within budget that they forget to support people to enjoy the journey. Many managers, not all, many managers are so focused on addressing things that have gone wrong or stopping things going wrong that they rarely, if ever, acknowledge someone that's done a great job. One manager said to me, well, people are supposed to do a good job. Why do I need to say, well done or thank you? I guess they're probably going to then work with you rather than against you. I'd worked with his team. They told me what they didn't tell him. That we can all collectively um, increase the value of the organisation and um, we can provide better services uh, and enjoy the journey. I think the key message for me was enjoy it, enjoy the change. Um, instead of being frightened of it, it was really good, really fantastic. Looking forward to the rest of them. Excellent. Small steps. The trick is. Change small, change often. Change small, change often. Very thought provoking, particularly when we're going through all this change and thinking about how other people see me and how I um, portray myself. So think about some of the positive messages that I can give. Lovely.